Hi everyone, I'm Jo Cordell Cooper, Holistic Personal Trainer based in Hobart, Tasmania. So today we're going to talk about uh, regaining your mojo and the foundations that uh, might get you feeling a little bit more fantastic. So I'm going to share my screen now. So here we've got some people, they're looking healthy, they're looking vibrant, they're clearly in the, the great outdoors, having a good time with their friends. There's a lot of boxes ticked there. So think about if you get the chance to, to do that uh, without it being you know, overly hard or overly intense, just being with friends in a nice place, enjoying the day. So I often work with a lot of people who are looking to regain their mojo. They're waking up tired and reporting that they have, have actually slept through the night. So I find this quite mysterious as to why they're waking up tired. My experience is it's generally to do with some kind of blood chemistry that is out of whack, uh, overly stressed, overly scheduled, uh, perhaps dealing with autoimmune or side effects from medications. So there's a lot of things to, to look at, a lot of things to consider. But if that's you waking up tired, uh, just stay tuned. This, this uh, information I'm putting out here is just a little bit different to what I normally present. Uh, I work a lot with people with autoimmune. So we look at what are the major stresses and the autoimmune is one of them, the overscheduling, uh, financials, uh, issues in relationships are all sort of stresses, um, but also the side effects of medications, uh, your age too, if you're in the 40 plus, you're probably going through menopause, perimenopause. Uh, grief is another big one and a pain in the body too. So think holistically about what's going on in your scenario and uh, it, if it ticks a lot of boxes. This, is, this webinar is about just other stuff that's not quite so mainstream um, or it kind of is because it's, it's just food for thought, but it's stuff that I don't normally uh, put out there when I do a webinar. It's just a little bit different. So it might be interesting for you. So I'll put this up here. Um, no one's really tired of eating, but they're certainly tired of the, the dieting information that's out there and how different it is and confusing. Uh, so um, the approach I use is around clean eating and just uh, if there's one word that sums it, sums it up, it's really about diversity. And I'll talk a little bit more about that. This is not just about food, this webinar, uh, but definitely uh, if you're uh, lost your zing, if you're not feeling energetic, we do need to really look at, at food and make sure it's diverse. So I'll talk a bit more about that down the track. Um, but as a personal trainer, uh, this concept of working so hard uh, and working to stress the body, to whether that's to grow more muscle or whether that's a cardiovascular thing and, and really thrash yourself, um, it actually doesn't work for so many people. If you're an elite athlete, well, you're going to expect that if they, it's part of your job, uh, that you need to have your heart rate way up high. I don't know what kind of job that is, but um, flogging people doesn't, it, it doesn't work. There are times in your life where you might thrive in that and really enjoy that. But for most people, they're running on empty. And if you're waking up tired um, and lost your zing, um, putting intense exercise into uh, your lifestyle is not going to do you any favours. It's going to break you down rather than build you up. So... That's just food for thought, and I don't know if you've heard that message before. So just to give you a little bit more background um, on me, I'm a holistic personal trainer, and what is this? Because anyone can say they're a holistic personal trainer, or any personal trainer can. Uh, they can be newly graduated and think that they have an approach, which is very holistic. Uh, but I've actually studied it for a couple of years to what I would say earn uh, this title um, so for, first thing is the regular personal training I do specialize in women over 40s uh, and um, also in water-based uh, personal training which is quite a different uh, niche so I have a number of clients who I only see in the land on land and some I only see in the water uh, I've worked a lot with uh, pre and postnatal clients too 
um, on land and in water. And I had a lovely story recently of a lady who had placenta priva, which uh, is where the placenta grows um, over the cervix. So it's a problem for uh, going into labour, a big problem. Uh, she was hospitalised and her baby was born at 34 weeks, but her doctor said the reason your baby has survived is actually comes back to your water-based exercise uh, and increased blood flow and circulation that that form of exercise provided. So uh, there's, there's a lot of evidence and I could talk on and on about the benefits of um, water-based exercise, but I won't. But just know I have that speciality and cancer exercise specialist, that is another uh, speciality that I have. There's only two of us uh, in Tasmania that have this expertise. Uh, so it was an uh, international course that had to be completed to gain that. Uh, part of my holistic personal training uh, with the Kazan Institute of Health up in Queensland um, was around blood and saliva analysis and looking at cortisol levels and food sensitivities and hormones and looking at the patterns it's not as if it's diagnostic. It's just like, look, let's look at the patterns that come up when we holistically look at your blood chemistry and your lifestyle and your food and your exercise and your stresses. When we look at all of that, plus the blood chemistry, we have a fairly good picture of what's going on. And health professionals just don't have the time. They just don't have the time to nut this stuff out and work with you one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, but I do. Uh, that's part of what being a holistic personal trainer is. I've also worked with a lot of people on managing stress. And I'll say to you, like, if there's one word that does that, I'd say just like hike. Just hiking, it's got your exercise, it's got your social, it's your, you're out in nature, stabilizing um, your stress hormones and your melatonin, which is your sleep hormone. Just hike. There you go, problem solved. You, know, you can turn the, the webinar off now. But Managing Stress Naturally is a product that I'll be releasing in the next month or two. And it is a self help guide to establishing where the stress actually is in the body. Uh, is, it, um, uh, is it a brain thing? Is it a hormone thing? Is it a pollution-based thing uh, or overscheduled type thing? So uh, look out for that. That'll be released uh, early in 2022. I've also delivered, deli bleh, developed our Eating for Energy and Zing program. So that is around clean eating and has a component of health coaching too. So we look at hormones, we look at fibres, we look at mindset and uh, changing or challenging behaviours and stories that we have uh, that make us uh, perhaps not choose the best food. Uh, people often say to me that they have um, a strange relationship with food, a stressed relationship with food. So we investigate all of that and uh, help people um, work through that. So that's six or 12 uh, health coaching sessions over a 12 month period. So very thorough. Uh, I have the hiking fitness stuff that I just mentioned. I have an online program that you can opt into, which will give you food to eat, gear to buy, and a training regime that will get you up to walking um, half day hikes. So four to seven um, hours of hiking. Uh, and it's a 10 week program to get you up to that, assuming that you've got reasonable level of fitness in the first place. I've had hiking adventures. I've taken people to New Zealand. That's on hold at the moment and might be re-released next year. We'll just see how things go post COVID. Uh, and I also offer health retreats down in Tasmania. So um, next one is coming up, it will be a winter retreat uh, down at Port Arthur. So Stuart's Bay Lodge. So look out for that. So that's a little bit more about me, but certainly uh, the service doesn't stop with just a workout. That is just a very small, I say that's like 10% of my skills. So hence I put these webinars out here. So I said that I wasn't going to talk too much about food, but there's a couple of things that really need to be touched on. Um, and that is this, this concept of diversity and clean eating and having food with the, you can see here, it's raw food. Um, and, you know, of course, it can be cooked. That's just one step away from being um, in its natural state. And that's what we want, the least amount of processed food. Uh, and thinking about diversity, but not only diversity of the food in terms of the proteins, your, your meats or meat alternatives, your carbohydrates, your fruit, your veg, 
your grains, your breads and pastas um, and your fats, whether that be healthy fats or other. Uh, so it's not just about that, but also colour. When you see, when you have great diversity, you see colour on the plate, which is a bit of a nana kind of thing to say, but so important. And I've just popped that hamburger right in the middle there. Okay, so it's just like, of course you can have that. Okay, it's about balance, it's about being sensible, and it's about having all of these other foods and some treat foods as well. Okay, this gives your gut health. So we don't need to be taking probiotics. Prebiotics are around fibres, and I'll talk about that a bit more in a moment. Uh, but diversity also gives you hormone stability and nutrient density. We don't need to eat a lot of food, but we do need to eat a variety of foods, the right foods. So what about vitamins? Let's have a little think about that. Uh, because there are four fat-soluble vitamins in the human diet, A, D, E, and K, and they store in the body, um, not for an overly long time, a couple of weeks. Um, they're all different. Um, but I wanted to make the point of uh, we have water-soluble vitamins too, um, vitamin C, thiamin, riboflavin, niacin, vitamin B range, uh, folicin, vitamin B12, biotin, and pantothenic acid. My point is, if the food isn't right, should I be supplementing because when things are water soluble, they don't store in the body. So if they're not uptaken by the body, if you don't get a quick benefit, like within a day or two with these vitamins, could it just be expensive weed? So how would you know? Well, are you feeling better if you're taking a vitamin supplement? Is your wee very uh, intense in colour? And are you weeing a lot? So we need to wee quite frequently, you know, six, seven times um, a day. Um, I've heard it said four, four times over a day. The bladder should be able to hold that. Um, but if we've got like really vibrant colours coming through, that's, that's nutrient coming out. So... We either need to drink more uh, or just mix up our food a bit more because if we're not getting the vitamins uh, from our foods and we are getting them from supplements, the body will just take what it needs and just excrete the rest. So remember, there's no energy in vitamins, um, but they are kind of expensive. So, you know, it's just like maybe we should just eat, eat better food. It's the best way to get the gut health is for it to come with the food and come with the fibre. So let's talk a little bit more about fibre. It's the indigestible part of the plant food, the vegetables, fruits, grains, beans, legumes. It's a type of carbohydrate. It keeps the digestive system healthy. It's also known to stabilise hormones, um, particularly uh, glucose and insulin com combination, um, and help your liver function better. So fibre improves gut health, um, as does nutritional diversity. So you could have, you know, like you could juice down a whole bunch of things and you'd get all the vitamins, but you wouldn't get the fibre. And we need the fibre to help get the energy to the energy system um, and for proper functioning in the liver. Uh, let's have a look at which foods contain zero fiber. Now I could do a whole webinar on fiber and, and I do in my eating for energy and zing. Um, it's very common sense um, stuff, but um, did you know that these things don't have any fiber at all dairy? So the milk, cheese and yogurt range, um, meats, seafood, clams, shellfish, those things, they, have, they don't have any so it's got to come from the fruit, the veg, um, the grains, um, maybe some pastas and rices, but the less processed it is, um, the better, because processing removes the fibre. And different foods have different fibres that have different roles to play in digestion. So you've got soluble, non-soluble and resistant starch 
fibre. So resistant starch, people know that as being, you know, spuds and pasta, it, it has a role to play. So we don't eliminate anything in a clean eating diet. Um, really, we just diversify. It's as simple as that. So how much fibre do you need? 25 grams uh, for women uh, each day and 30 for men. So to just give you an example, a pair, I have to know is about four grams um, of fibre. So um, that's a lot of pears, isn't it? So, you know, that diversity of diet. So uh, in eating for energy and zing, I'll give you like a sheet on what's got really high fibre. Uh, it's in one of the webinars, but yeah, just, just look it up on a nutritional chart, uh, which is on most foods, which come in a box. Uh, or if you're using something like My Fitness Power, which is a, a nutritional tracker, which I also use in eating for energy and zing. Uh, and you can actually check how much fiber you're eating each day. And if you're a long way off that, um, some of your problems might be around nutrient absorption, for example. Uh, so, yeah, so the vitamin tablet's not going to help. You've got to do the work with the food. So consider that your fruit and veg consumption daily because only 6 to 8% of people in Australia eat the recommended dose of two fruits and five vegetables a day. Only 6 to 8%. That's an absolute disgrace, I think. And what is a serve? One serve is a cup raw or a half cup of a fruit or veg or grainy thing, thinking in the size of things cooked, half cup cooked. Consider that. Uh, when you see that on a plate, it's actually low food. <laughs> so I wanted to talk about caffeine because it is a metabolic stimulant and it's got a fairly bad rap. I've I reckon there's probably 10 articles against caffeine to one that, that promotes it. Um, but let's consider that person who wakes up tired. Is there a benefit perhaps to having a bit of caffeine? Um, first thing, just to get things moving because caffeine can improve mood. It can decrease the likelihood of depression, stimulate brain function and protect against Alzheimer's and Parkinson's disease, depending on the research that you read on that one. But the tea and the coffee is more than caffeine. It is more than that. It has antioxidant qualities, bioactive compounds. So I know I'm saying don't have caffeine. Uh, as I mentioned, can help with alertness and mental energy. So think of it that way, the benefit. Um, studies showing that caffeine can benefit endurance performance, high intensity exercise and power sports, but mostly in the highly trained athletes. So it's not going to make you suddenly perform better at the gym, but it might give you a better zing to actually work a little bit harder. And, and that's beneficial for your whole health. Now, they've actually got down to genetics. Genetics have determined that you might be a slow or fast metabolizer of caffeine. And if you're a fast metabolism, metabolizer, your performance is enhanced. And if you're a slow metabolizer, your performance is decreased. This also has consequences for sleep. And I talk about the story of my mum always has a, a cup of tea before she goes to bed and she sleeps well. Recently, she uh, reported that she had a cup of coffee and she was wired all night. So obviously, she had gone past um, the healthy uh, limit for her body, for her situation also. So it's really about knowing yourself and not going crazy about this. Uh, sometimes I have people who walk through the door at 10 o'clock and they're on their fifth coffee. That's a lot of coffee. That's a lot of stimulant. And I would say too much. But how much caffeine is too much? Well, years ago, I looked this up and it said around that 200 milligrams. So give you an example, uh, a regular cup of tea is around about 45 milligrams, uh, a coffee um, around 80 milligrams, and then you've got people having double shots and things like that. So double it again. So 200 milligrams. More recently, I looked it up and it said 400. So I thought, well, is it 200? Is it 400? So I guess we need to 
come back to how we're feeling if we've got symptoms, side effects, heart palpitations or feeling edgy, then we've probably got a bit much caffeine going in. But also consider the timing of it. Is it pre-workout? Is it on waking? Uh, are we having trouble with sleep? Are we using it to bolster our evening workouts or something? We want to kind of calm the farmer's day. The day goes on. Um, so um, cortisol levels, despite I've heard this said so many times, will spike with exercise at night. They actually won't. It's more adrenaline-based. Cortisol needs to just... just slither out the body um, and with that the sleep hormones melatonin can can rise um, but yeah just think about what you're trying to achieve with this it's not uh, a get out of um, uh, being perfect with your diet and not having caffeine at all it's about well what does my body need and if you're waking up tired I'd say a little bit of stimulant a natural stimulant it's probably a good thing give it a go review so on to alcohol so what has the role of alcohol got for the person who's lost their mojo and 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 really not feeling energetic so here's some some fun facts about alcohol it is a hundred percent carbohydrate on the sugar side of things um, it is said to not store um, within the body so it remains active and is used um, as an energy source so that sounds pretty good but if we flesh that out a little bit what we've actually got is something that's replacing food as an energy source so we're looking at hormonal flux because this is a sugary carbohydrate not a slow release carbohydrate so we might feel a little bit elevated and then have a slump and then go into an eating pattern um, that does not do us any favors to regain that energy metabolically it's known as a depressant or it makes you slow down um, it is a diuretic it makes you eliminate or be more often even when you drink it with water it will take the water as well it acts on hormones that keep uh, water or fluid within the body and sends it out it excretes it so just consider that if hydration is an issue for you it is a liver loader so it does uh, make the liver a little bit less responsive a little bit more sluggish uh, and the other thing is to think of or is there the social benefit? Like, is it in a context? Does it create so social lubricants? Does it make you dance all night? You know, think about things like that. So think about the whole picture, the whole picture, not just about the calories. But if we want an energy, not too much alcohol is a good strategy, but let's be sensible and enjoy life as well. I want to talk about high intensity training because when you read the research on it, you have to question why you would not do high intensity training because the evidence is so um, beneficial in why you would do it. But um, there is a tipping point with high intensity training. And what, what that means high intensity is your heart rate is over 85% of your maximum, which is very hard to sustain. And then you would have a little break and then you would go back and do high intensity training. So it's like kind of like circuit training or um, push yourself to your max and then back it off so you can breathe because we're using energy systems that are short-lived and then they need to recover. So you can go again. It is, it is good for you, but there's also reach research out there particularly for the 40 plus woman that it's an additional stressor it's actually taking from the body so just consider that uh, what's working for you um, I play hockey and even though I'm in my 50s I need hit training because that is a requirement of the sport but I did spend most of last year injured and I think you know, I had pushed it too far. There was not the balance. So there's this thing also as we age called vascular stiffness. So you can imagine what that means to your veins and arteries. Things aren't 
as lubricated or as um, elastic as they once were. Uh, and this leads to cardiovascular disease, which is the number one killer of women. It's heart disease. So what do, if we don't do HIIT, what do we do? So think walking, hiking, swimming, any of the steady state exercise options are great for you. And I've heard people in the fitness industry talking about, um, you know, the steady state heart rate things are not the things that get you results. Well, what is the result we're looking for? If we're looking to regain our mojo, if we're looking to address vascular stiffness, and just be a happy, vibrant person who can hike and swim and, and do these things. And maybe they can't sprint to the end of the street, but you know, maybe that doesn't matter. I suggest it doesn't. Um, what result are we actually missing out on by not doing HIIT training? Now, I've been training women for a long time, and I found the type of woman that comes to my um, centre and keeps coming is not doing HIIT training because they don't like it. It's not pleasant. It's hard. Um, it might make them feel a little bit sick, a little bit overwhelmed, and they don't want to keep coming if they're going to feel like that. But moderate intensity, they can do that and push, pull back. So there's many benefits, um, not only from a health perspective, um, but also from an ongoing routine. People are more likely to stick to moderate intensity and the research supports that high intensity you get a benefit and then you stop getting a benefit if you keep pushing because it is a stressor to the body I talk more about that in my other webinar series on autoimmune conditions so where to next you are absolutely welcome to share this webinar with anyone who would like to watch it uh, it's my gift to you. Um, it's one of many webinars that I do for free over my year so that you can have access to this information. Uh, but if you want to work with me one-on-one, -on -one, uh, I offer personal training and small group, maximum of four personal training in my beautiful indoor-outdoor studio. So you'll be perched on the edge of the bush uh, using our deck and you can see the room behind me here it's got all all the regular gear so that's just personal training one-on-one -on -one or small group maximum of four a second service that I'm um, increasingly um, getting hired for is health coaching or wellness coaching so that might be within an existing program such as eating for energy and thing that I've mentioned a few times throughout this workout uh, throughout this webinar, um, or it might be in partnership with some of the cortisol testing, the food sensitivities or the blood chemistry. Okay, so health coaching uh, can happen online. So people who aren't based in Hobart, you can still access me, that from me um, with either one of those health coaching programs. What I really love to do is work with people across all of that because it's a holistic approach then because sometimes I have people coming to personal training and I think we're really not getting to the bottom of the problem and it's only when we invest in the health coaching as well that it all starts all the pieces start to come together and I call this the ultimate client series so that is a six-month process uh, where we look at the physical um, and the health coaching combined and uh, some of that uh, cortisol testing, food sensitivity testing. So we get, I, I say we leave no stone unturned. So that's what that is about. So I'm not gonna talk about any pricing um, for that. My website is jocc.com.au. So jocc.com.au. Um, but this is my complimentary health consult um, link here. So Joe cc.as.me backslash explore health and you'll get a 30 minute consult with me there obligation free just see if we're a good fit for working and if we're not you know i, I bid you um good health and uh, um but yeah if you want extra attention please make that appointment it is also on my website um at, right at the top there's a click here for that consult so that's all from me. Uh, if you have any questions um, around this, um, you can find me on Facebook 
on Joe CC, Holistic PT, and also Holistic Personal Training. So two groups there where you can find me uh, publicly and those groups are open uh, for, for anybody who'd like to come in. All right, thank you.